we saw earlier, P time and any time. Any time and P time. Materials. This one, any type material, has an imbalance of charge carriers, which means that any type material has an excess of electrons in it, while as P type material has an excess of holes in it, positive charge carriers, while this one is has an excess of, uh, of electrons charge carriers. This give out or give us to uh, this lead us to give us of the following. Here, electrons are the majority charge carriers in this material, whereas uh, holes, holes or positive, these are minority charge carriers. Whereas in P type, we get, uh, we get that uh, holes or positive, these are majority charge carriers, majority charge carriers, whereas electrons are minority charge carriers. So they have an imbalance of charge when they are in isolation. P type plus P type has imbalance has an excess of holes, while as any type has an excess of electrons. But when the P type and any type materials are joined side by side, if you take P type and any type material and you join them side by side by a special technique, we form another material which is known as a PN junction. This PN junction is very important in the fundamental part in electronics. So when P type material and any type materials are joined side by side by a special technique, we form a PN junction. Now, when in contact, holes diffuse from P type material towards any type materials. They diffuse from P type material towards uh, uh, any type materials. Whereas electrons diffuse towards P type material from any type materials. They diffuse crossing the boundaries which is separating a P type material and any type material. I will draw it here. Let's say this is our uh, this is our P type material and any type material. Let's say this is uh, P type, uh, this is any type and this is P type material. We know that in any type material there is an excess of uh, electrons. There is excess of uh, electrons. Now, and we know that in this one, in P type material, there is an excess of holes, and holes are nothing else but just a positive charge. Now, after this is after being placed side by side. Now, after time, after being placed side by side, the electrons from P type and uh, holes from any type start to move. These uh, holes start to close, they jump here. They jump coming here. Well, as electrons again from here, they close coming, accumulating on the other side. Remember, these electrons and holes, they are just accumulating along a very thin layer. This is a very thin layer in which this layer is known as a depletion uh, layer. Depletion layer. We're going to see what's the meaning of depletion layer. So, Electrons jump from any type of material towards P type material, well as the holes, which are positive charge, jump from, uh, uh, from P type material towards any type of materials. Now, after reaching here, they create a layer of positive charge on this side and they create a layer of a negative charge on this side. This layer of uh, negative charge prevents further electrons from jumping from, uh, from, uh, from any type to the P type. And this layer, this layer of, uh, of holes uh, also prevents further holes jumping from P type to, to, to towards uh, any type material. Now, this one creates the so-called uh, the diffusion the diffusion of these holes and electrons across a boundary set up a potential barrier. Set up a potential barrier, which means that you will have to have a certain amount of potential in order for electrons to jump from any type to P type or for a uh, host to jump from P type to what? To any type. The size of potential barrier depends uh, on quite a few things. It depends on either what is the type of material which is used for doping. Uh, the size of potential barrier depends on the material. What is the type of material? What is the type of semiconductor which is used? Is it silicon or germanium? Also depends on the amount of doping. If the doping process 
is uh, very large, their added impurities are very large, then the potential barrier will be small. Whereas if the added impurities are quite small, the potential barrier will be will be right, but also depends on the temperature. Remember we said that in semiconductor, increasing the temperature decreases the resistance of this material. Therefore, if we increase the temperature, the potential barrier will become thin. Whereas if we increase, uh, we increase the temperature, the potential barrier will be, will be very right. Now, just simple, a potential barrier for germanium rise between 0.2 volt to 0.3 volt. And potential barriers uh, for silicon rise from 0.6 volt to 0.7 volt. This means that uh, in order for electrons or in order for conduction to occur, you have to have uh, a voltage or a potential difference of about 0.7 for silicon and 0.3 for germanium. Now this type of connection 
function is what we, which is known as a, a reverse bias. It is a reverse because it is an interchange. A negative is connected to a positive, and a positive uh, P type is connected to what? To a negative. Now, this one can be drawn like this. If we have a P type material like this, PM junction like this. bias 